Dear friends, I am Dr. K. Kannan, Professor of Mechanical Engineering, Anjali Mall Mahalingam Engineering College, Kovil Vinni. I am happy to meet you again in the video lecture on the subject Design of Transmission Systems. And this is lecture number 5.4. The topic is Design of Spur Gear. So, we are going to discuss the Design of Spur Gear using the PSG Design Data Book. In the earlier lecture, we discussed the gear drive types of gear drive, law of gearing, types of gear profile, pressure angle, gear nomenclature, backlash, conjugate action, interference and undercutting and the gear failure and its type in the earlier three lectures on the gear design and in this lecture we are going to discuss the design procedure. So, the learning outcome to the students. At the end of the lecture, the student will be able to design spur gear using the PSG design data book. So, design consideration for the gear drive. So, normally in the design of any gear, uh, spur gear, helical gear or bevel gear, warm gear, the following information will be given in the problem. The power to be transmitted, the speed of the driving gear and the speed of the driven gear or the velocity ratio and the center distance. So, these are all the basic information for the design of gear and that will be available in the problem. If the values are not available, we can suitably assume according to the requirement and application. The following requirements must be satisfied, so it must be met in the design of the gear drive. The gear teeth should have sufficient strength so that they will not fail under static loading or dynamic loading during the normal running condition. So, there are two types of loading, dynamic loading due to the meshing of the gear teeth, static loading because of the weight. So, these two, the tooth have sufficient strength so that the, the will, they will not malfunction or they will not fail due to the static loading or dynamic loading. The gear teeth should have wear characteristics so that their life is satisfactory. So, they will not be wear. So, normally we are using the hardened steel, a hardened material. So, the material gear teeth after manufacturing the gear, they are surface hardened. They, they are undergoing some heat treatment process to increase the, the surface strength so that the wear characteristics will be better. The use of space and the material should be economical. So, we ought to have economical design with respect to space as well as the material because increasing the space and the material will increase the cost of the gearbox. The alignment of the gear and the deflection of the shaft must be considered because they, they affect on the performance of the gear. So, the weight of the gear will have the effect on the shaft design. So, we ought to carefully consider the alignment of the gear and the deflection of the shaft. So, due to the uh, use of the gear, loading on the gear and the lubrication of the gears must be satisfactory. So, for long life of the gear, there should be sufficient lubrication. Normally, the gear box, it is completely filled with uh, lubricating oil so that the heat generated because of the running of the gear will be removed by the oil. So, if we discuss the beam strength or the Lewis equation. So, look at the, we take a diagram of the gear teeth. So, the, the force is acting on the gear teeth. So, this is the force, normal force acting on the gear teeth and it has got three components of the force, normal force which is perpendicular to the tooth profile. It will have three components. One is WR, radial component of the force. WT tangential component of the force and the axial component which is perpendicular to these two. So, the axial component will not have any effect on the strength of the gear tooth. So, these two components WT and WR they are very important for the design of the gear tooth. The maximum bending stress. So, radial the actually the effect of the radial force is also very very minimum comparing with the tangential force. Tangential force, it is caused, it caused, uh, it caused the bending of the gear tooth. So, we assume the, we just uh, uh, rotate the diagram by 90 degree and the gear tooth can be considered as a cantilever beam. So, cantilever beam subject to a vertical load. So, it, it causes the bending of the cantilever uh, beam or bending of the, the gear tooth. 
so the bending force the force due to bending and the bending force is very important on the design of the uh, gear tip and that is given by lewis so sigma b equal to m into y by i where m is the maximum bending moment at the critical section bc which is wt into h so h is the height of the tooth y is the half thickness of the uh, tooth at the critical section which is p by 2 and i is the moment of inertia about the center line of the tooth which is p b t q by 12 where b is the width of the gear face so this is the width of the gear face now substituting all the values in the uh, sigma b equation so we will get sigma b equal to m into y is the original equation so m equal to w t into h y equal to t by t t by 2 and i moment of inertia equal to b t q by 12 So simplifying this equation is 6 w t h divided by b t square. So or from this equation w t the tangential load or tangential force on the gear tip b t b t square sigma b, b divided by 6 in 6 h and substituting t square by 6 h uh, uh, 6 h equal to pi m y. So pi is the pi is a constant m is the module and y is the form factor. And the Lewis equation becomes sigma b b pi m y. So W t equal to sigma b uh, the b the mean the phase width of the gear pi module and y, where y is the Lewis form factor. So it depends on the number of teeth on the gear. So this is the Lewis equation which is used to calculate the bending load on the gear too. So this the the major the gear design in the gear design the main force Is which is important is the bending load W T, which is calculated from the Lewis equation. And next load is dynamic tooth load. So dynamic load are due to the following reason: inaccuracies of the tooth facing, irregularities of the tooth profile, and deflection of the teeth under the load. So these are all the uh, uh, I mean causes of the dynamic load. The dynamic load W D equal to W T plus W I. Uh, w T is the steady load due to the transmitted torque, and W I is the increment load due to the dynamic action. The increment load W I depends upon the pitch line velocity, the phase width, material of the gear, and the accuracy of cut and the tangential load. So the W T and W I they are the contributor for the dynamic loading. WD equal to WT plus WI, which is WT into WI equal to 21B into B pl BC plus WT divided by 21, uh, so 12B into square root of BC into P BC plus WT, where V is the pitch line velocity in meters per second, B is the phase width of the gear in millimeter, and C is the deformation of the dynamic factor in newton per millimeter. The deformation factor depends upon the error in action between the teeth, the class of cuts of the gear, and the tooth form and the material of the gear. So these are all the parameters which is influencing, which is important for the uh, design of the gear: pitch line velocity, phase width, material of the gear, then the tangential load. These are all the accuracy of the cut. So how gear gear cutting uh, gear is manufactured. So these are all the various para important parameter in the design of the gear. And the static tooth load, the static tooth load, although also called as beam strength or endurance strength of the tooth, is obtained by Lewis formula by substituting flexural endurance limit or elastic limit sigma e in the place of permissible working stress sigma w. So the static tooth load or the beam strength of the tooth w s equal to sigma e b into p c into y, or sigma e into b into pi into m into y. So b is the phase width. M is the module and Y is the form factor. For safety against the tooth breakage, the static load W S should be greater than the dynamic load W T. Pagiham states that suggests the following relationship between W S and W T. For steady load, W S should be greater than 1.25 times of W T. Static load should be greater than 1.2 times of the dynamic load. For pulsating load, W S should be greater than 1.35 times of W T. And for shock load, WS should be greater than 1.5 times of WD. So these are all the uh, suggestions given by the Buckingham for the design of 
for the calculation of static tooth load. Then wear tooth load, wear tooth load, the maximum load that the wear that the gear teeth can carry without premature wear depends upon the radius of curvature of the tooth profiles and on the elasticity and surface fatigue limits of the material. The maximum or the limiting load for satisfactory wear of the gear teeth is obtained by the Buckingham equation once again. W W. So that is load due to the wear that is equal to dp into b into q into k. So where dp is the pitch circle diameter of the pinion in millimeter, b is the face width of the pinion in millimeter, q is the ratio factor and k is the load stress factor. So these are all the various loads, the bending load, uh, dynamic load, static load and the wear tooth load, these are all the different loads that we have to consider for the design of the spur gear. Now we will discuss the design procedure of the spur gear using the PSG data book, B PSG design data book. So once again I, I want to uh, inform or remind the students that all the information, all the data, the properties of the material, equations, everything is available in the PSG data book. The, in the design of the spur gear you have to strictly follow the procedure taking the appropriate properties and the prop appropriate equations for the design of the spur, uh, spur gear, as a design of any gear uh, for that matter. So the students remember, try to remember the procedure sequential steps in design of the gear and to follow, use the data book, calculate the parameter carefully so that you can successfully complete the design of the spur gear problem. So from the definition of the problem, we have to find out the speed ratio. Uh, majority of the cases speed ratio will be given in the problem. If the speed ratio is not given, the speed of the pinion and the speed of the gear will be given, then you have to calculate the speed ratio. Speed ratio i equal to number of teeth on the gear divided by number of teeth on the pinion which is z2 by z1 or speed of the pinion divided by speed of the gear which is n1 by n2. Suppose the value is not given, you assume as 1. So this is the flexibility with the student. Then choose the suitable material for the gear and the pinion. So the information you can take from the table number 5 from page number 8.4. So if the material is not given in the problem, then you have to select the material. If the material is given specific, specified in the problem, then you have to use the material for the design. And I have shown the extract of the table here. So this is the table number 5 uh, where for the depending on the gear ratio, we can take pinion wheel material. So C45 either C45, uh, C, I mean uh, combination wheel, we can take cast steel grade, uh, I mean um, C35, M175 or ST50, so you can take C50 with the corresponding, um, I mean wheel material. Or sometimes the C45 can be used for both the pinion and the wheel, so depending on the condition, depending on the condition, if suppose that it is mentioned in the problem C45 for both the pinion and the gear and you have to follow the instruction. And remember, we do all the calculation for the pinion material property because pinion wheel is smaller. So when the smaller wheel is capable of the, I mean, withstand the compression stress and the bending stress, the larger wheel automatically, uh, I mean, automatically withstand the, the compression stress and the bending stress. So the calculations will be based on the the properties of pinion material that you have to remember. Select the tooth profile and the pressure angle. Generally, involute profile with the pressure angle 14, 14 and a half degree or 20 degree are used. So, unless it is mentioned, you can you have the liberty of selecting 14 and a half and 20 degree and always we use the involute profile for the gear design. Then calculate the torque Mt equal to 97420 into power in kilowatt divided by the pinion speed and it will be in kilogram per centimeter. And calculate the design torque. So, Mt within square bracket, which is Mt into kkd in kilogram per centimeter, where n is the pinion speed, k is the load concentration factor. And this factor is available in the page number 8.15, table number 14. And the dynamic load factor, PhD data book, page number, uh, table number 15 and page number 8.16. But for our initial calculus, later on for verification, we will take uh, k and kd value. But initially, you have to take KKD equal to 1.3. Now, this is the table number 14. So, where you have to take the value load concentration factor K. So, 
so the for cylindrical gear we have this table for bevel gear we have the table on the right side so the value depends on psi p which is b by d1 so b is the face width d1 is the diameter of the pinion and depending on the uh, the uh, ratio we uh, for different values we can take the uh, the value of the k and similarly for the bevel gear but initially we have to take k k d equal to 1.3 then this is the table number 15 where the dynamic load factor k d and depends it depends on the is quality of the gear for cylindrical gear and conical gear and the uh, pinion surface hardness hp value so hp depending on the hp value and is quality we have to take for the straight spiral in the straight bevel gear and helical in the spiral bevel gear so you have to take all the data depending on the type of the gear uh, surface hardness surface hardness in terms of brunel hardness number and is quality of the gear then calculate the equivalent x small less from the the equation is available here so this is the equation and this equation is available in the psc data book or e equivalent x small less is directly available in the page number uh, 8.14 table number 9 uh, i will show the table now so this is the table number 9 uh, and the, we have equivalent x small less equation and depending on the material the last column it gives the equivalent x small less steel Steel, steel steel combination pinion 1 and wheel so steel steel both material are steel we can take 2.15 steel cast iron or steel bronze steel nylon depending on the pinion material gear material and we can take the equivalent x small less suppose both wheels are made by cast iron ci then you can take 1.1 into 10 power 6 newton per cent kilogram force per centimeter square so depending on the material you can directly take the equivalent x small less from the table number 9 then calculate psi value which is b by a face width divided by the center distance and this value you take in between 0.2 and 0.4 so initially you take the value 0.2 to 0.4 then we calculate the design surface compressive stress and the equations are available in the page number 8.16 so sigma c equal to With, so sigma c within bracket equal to cb into hb into kcl or cr into hrc into kcl so where cb and cr is the coefficients depending on the surface hardness and the table number 16 page number 8.16 so the table number 16 you have to refer for the uh, various values and these equations are also available in the page number 8.16 hb is the brunel hardness number hrc is the rockwell c hardness number and the kcl is the life factor and this kcl is available in the page number 8.17 table number 17 so here you have, you can you have the liberty of selecting any one of these three equations uh, for calculating the design surface compressive stress so i will we will be solving problems using the uh, first equation or the second equation uh, depending on the condition suppose the specifically it is given the brunel hardness number in the problem then we have to use the hp value otherwise we have the liberty so it is up to the student to select the appropriate equation for calculating the design compressive stress and this is the table cb and cr value so depending on the material and depending on the uh, depending on the heat treatment process depending on the surface hardness we can take cb value or cr value so depending on the material you can select the equation that is also another uh, condition for uh, the selecting the particular equation for calculating the design compressive stress then this is the kcl the life factor for surface kcl value uh, table number 17 so this is here depend for steel and the cast iron so for steel you can take depending on the life in number of cycles so it is when it is greater than 10 power 7 it is 1 less than 10 power 7 you can you have to calculate where n is the life in number of cycles that you can calculate using the equation and then we have to calculate the center distance and this equation is available in the page number 8.13 so a is greater than or equal to i plus or minus 1 cubic root of 0.4 divided by the sigma c whole square into e into design torque divided by i into psi this will be in centimeter and here plus or minus so plus for external gearing and minus for internal gearing and calculate the design bending stress Uh, using the equation available in the psc data book page number 8.18 so sigma b within square bracket equal to 1.4 into kbl divided by n into k sigma into sigma minus 
This is also in plethora of force per centimeter square, where sigma minus 1 is the endurance limit. And this equation data, everything is available in the page number 8.19, table number 19. N is the factor of safety, table number 20, page number 8.19. K sigma is the stress concentration factor, again page number 8.19, table number 21. KBL is the life factor for bending, table number 22, page number 8.20. So, all the information are available and I will show the table. So, you have to select all the parameter and calculate the design bending stress. And this is table number 19, where you can take the endurance limit. So, depending on the heat, heat treatment process, forged steel, cast steel, alloy steel, cast iron. So, we have to take the equation. Sigma E is the ultimate uh, stress and the sigma Y is the yield stress. So, sigma u and the sigma y you can take from the material property. So, for, for, a, for the pinion material, you can take ultimate tensile stress and the yield stress kilogram force per centimeter square from the material property you have to select. Then, n factor of safety n from the table number 20. So, depending on the material and the mode of manufacturing, casting, casting or forging and forging and type of the heat treatment. So, you can take the factor of safety depending on type of heat treatment, type of manufacture and the material. Then table number 21, stress concentration factor K sigma. So, it is again addendum modification factor, addendum modification coefficient x. So, normally we take x is less than or equal to 1, greater than or equal to 0. From the center column, you take the property depending on the material. Then table number 22, KBL, life factor for bending. Again, material, the Brunel hardness surface hardness number, uh, HP, Brunel hardness number and life and number of cycles. So, depending on the life and number of cycles, you can take the KBL. So, material, surface hardness in Brunel hardness number and life in number of cycles and depending on the three parameter, you have to take the, the KBL, life, fact, life factor for bending. So, everything available, remember everything, all the informations are available in the design data book. So, you have to select the information, select the data with uh, uh, correct justification, correct information in your mind and make a decision. Le next step, you have to determine minimum value of the module and this module equation is available in the page number 8.13a. So, m module is greater than or equal to 1.26 cubic root of the design torque divided by bending stress, design bending stress, form factor, psi m and the z1, where y is the form factor from the PSC data book table number 40 from page number 8.53 and z1 is the number of teeth on the pinion and initially if the value is, on, is not given, initially you take between 18 to 25. So, minimum number of teeth should be 18, always remember minimum number of teeth should be 18 so that there will be, there will not be any problem in the undercutting. So, there will not be undercutting during the manufacturing of the gear. Then you take the psi m, psi m value B by m, which is phase width divided by module and this value you ought to take 10. Initially, you ought to take 10 because we do not know module or the phase width. So, you take the value of 10. So, substitute here, calculate the module and the module is to be standardized. So, the next standard module from the PhD data book, table number 1 page number 8.2. So, this is first part of the problem. So, we have to calculate the compression stress, we have to calculate the center distance, we have to calculate the bending stress, we have to calculate the module and then we have to standard, we have to take the standard module. Once you take the standard module, then we have to go for verification and calculating the parameter of the geometrical parameter of the gear. And the standard module, so this is the form factor, y value form factor from table number 40 and this is the table number 1 for selecting the standard module. So, you have to select from the choice 1. So, the first column, if the number is not suitable for the first column, then you have to use the second column. So, you have to use the first column or second choice, you have to standardize the module. Once you standardize the module, determine number of teeth on the pinion and this equation is available in the page number 8.22. Is that one equal to 2a divided by I plus 1 into M and here this M is the standard module. What is the standard module taken from the table? Then you calculate the number of teeth on the uh, gear which is Z2 equal to I into Z1. Then you calculate the center distance PCD. 
So, pitch circle diameter of the pinion D1 equal to M into Z1, pitch circle diameter of the gear D2 equal to M into Z2, and the center distance A equal to D1 plus D2 divided by 2. Then we calculate the face width B equal to psi into A, which is in centimeter. B is also equal to psi M into A. So, psi already we assumed, and the psi M also we assumed as a 10. Then you have to calculate the B value using the two equations, and whichever is higher. That is the value for the phase width of the gear. So the value should be higher, highest value among the two. We have to select. We have to use for the further calculation. Then calculate the pitch line velocity. So V equal to pi d1 n divided by 60. So d1 is the diameter PCD of the uh, pinion, and n is the pinion speed in meters per second. Now we have to find the value of kkd for calculate the design torque. So, design torque equal to m2 into kkd. We said earlier k value, kd value you have to take from the table. Now, we have to take initially we assumed 1.3. Now, you have to take kkd value and calculate the design torque once again for verification, for checking of the design for safety. Then, check for compressive stress. So, this equation is also available in the page number 8.13, table number 8. So, the compressive stress for the gear what we designed. A it is equal to 0.74 i plus or minus 1 divided by A into square root of i plus or minus 1 E into Mt divided by I into B. So, Mt is the design torque newly calculated. Uh, all the other values are the same. So, B value everything we have calculated, A value everything we have calculated for the gear, we have to substitute. And the value what we calculate sigma C should be less than or equal to design compressive stress what we have calculated earlier, design compressive stress. The value of the Actual compressive stress of the gear should be less than or equal to the design compressive stress. If the condition is satisfied, the design is safe. If the condition is not satisfied, we have to increase the face width to satisfy the requirement, to satisfy the design surface compressive stress. So, this is the modification required. You need not repeat the calculation once again, we just adjust the face width to satisfy the requirement. Then, check for the bending stress. So, this is again sigma b equal to i plus or minus 1 a m b y into m t and this value should be less than or equal to design bending stress what we calculated earlier. Again, if the condition is not satisfied, increase the phase width b. Then check for plastic deformation. All the equations are available in the page number 8.21. So, sigma c maximum equal to sigma c into square root of m t maximum divided by m t and it should be less than or equal to sigma c maximum. Sig similarly, sigma b maximum equal to sigma b into m t by m t design torque and maximum m ma I mean maximum design torque divided by the design torque it should be less than or equal to sigma b maximum. All these values are available in the table page number 8.21. We just select and uh, use in the equation and uh, verify. Once again here, if the condition is not satisfied, we have to go for changing the phase width. And in the problem, normally check for plastic deformation is not required unless it is specified. So, if it is not given, if it is given in the problem, you have to check for the plastic deformation, you do the calculation. Otherwise, we just skip number the last step, step number 20. Then calculate the dimensions of the gear teeth. Addendum F O into M. F O is the F O equal to 1 for full depth teeth and F O equal to 0.8 for stub teeth and the M is the module. Dedendum equal to F O plus C into M, where C is the clearance factor, which is 0.25 for full depth teeth and 0.3 for stub teeth. And we calculate the tooth height, addendum plus dedendum. So, these are all the geometrical cal uh, calculations of the gear teeth. So, once all the calculations are completed, we calculate the tip circle diameter PCD plus 2 into addendum. Which circle, tip circle diameter of the pinion and the gear we have to calculate. So, these are all the calculations. Once the calculations are completed, then list the design details of the gear. So, these are all the 20, 22 steps are the steps for designing the per gear. Not only is per gear, for all the gear, the same type of 20, minimum 20 steps will be available. You have to strictly follow the procedure to design the gear. So, remember all the equations all the data, property, everything available in the design data book. That uh, the only requirement is we have to follow the sequential step. 
so you can remember the sequential step only when you solve the problem on your own so you have to take, you have to listen to the video lectures on the design problem solving on the sfer gear and then you take your problem follow the procedure and the, you design on your own so that you will remember the, prop, uh, the procedure for designing the sfer gear we stop here these are all the books i have published in the mechanical engineering subject i upload the video lectures of all the subjects here in the youtube channel you subscribe the channel use the video lectures for your better preparation and learning in the mechanical engineering subject so thank you for watching you can post your comments on the comments box you can contact me through my mail id or whatsapp number for any clarification subject we'll meet again in the next lecture with a few problem on the design house per gear